Yes, USB mouse support has arrived here in iOS 13 on the iPhone. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up and use your mouse with your iPhone. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and this is Studio Live Today where I help you create, record and release your best music. And in this one, we're doing something a little bit weird because we have connected my USB mouse here via the Lightning to USB 3 adapter to my iPhone so that I can test out how the mouse works. And you know what? So far, so good. It's kind of fun. You might be thinking, small screen, is it really going to be that useful? Well, yes, it's going to be better when it comes to the iPad in just a few days' time, but I couldn't wait, so I wanted to check out how the mouse functions here on iOS 13 because it's gonna be exactly the same as iPad OS. So let's jump in now and show you how we can get this set up and then we'll take it for a test run. The gear that we're using for this is pretty self-explanatory but let's go through it quickly anyway. We have a USB mouse with its USB receiver. You could of course use a corded mouse as well and we have the Lightning to USB 3 adapter. If you're not familiar with this one, check out the video up in the top and down in the description and there's also a link there to where you can pick one of these up. This allows you to connect a USB device into your lightning port as well as charging your device at the same time. So this is all we need to get going. And of course we need iOS 13, the new iOS from Apple installed on our phone. So let's get this connected and show you how we can set up mouse support. So firstly, we need to plug the USB. Yes, I always do it upside down. USB dongle into our lightning to USB 3 adapter. And then that one is going to go into the lightning port of our phone. So that is connected now. It won't actually show you anything here. So if you plug it in and you think you've done something wrong, don't worry, we have to turn on assistive touch in order for the mouse to actually start functioning because the mouse support is actually an accessibility feature here in iOS 13. So let's show you how to do that now. To set up our mouse, we need to go to our settings. So I'm gonna tap on the settings icon here and we need to scroll down on the left here until we get to accessibility and we're gonna tap on the accessibility menu. Over here on the right now or wherever it is on your iPhone, depending on the size, we're gonna scroll down because what we wanna look at here is touch. So we wanna tap on touch there and we wanna turn assistive touch on. So tap on assistive touch, tap it on and what you'll notice is in the middle there, I have my mouse cursor. Now I've already customized it to make it red because red goes faster, we know that, but now it is ready to go. So we can scroll and yes, it's got the Apple style scrolling where it's kind of opposite to what I'm used to on a PC, but that's okay, I'll get used to it. And here is where we can set up all of our different device options. So let's go through some of the options that we have here and then we'll jump in and give this mouse a try. Now our mouse options are actually right down towards the bottom. So you can ignore a lot of this stuff for now. You can come back and play with that later if you like. But the thing that we want here is under pointer devices and devices. So if we click, yes, click on that one, then you can see here we've got the connected devices USB receiver, which is what's connected over here. I have tried my Bluetooth mouse. I couldn't quite get it to work, but that could well be user error. I'll give that another try, but USB devices are definitely working here. So we'll click on USB receiver. Now now this is where it gets super cool because we can actually set up our buttons. So this mouse has three buttons across the top here and I've noticed here now, which I didn't notice before, we've got customized additional buttons, which we'll play with in a moment. But the way that I've set this up is button one is a single tap here. And if we wanna change that, we just click on it and then we can select any one of these different options here. So there's a heap of different things that we can set up with our mouse clicks and our left and right buttons. So the other thing that I have already changed is that I wanted my app switcher here. So I've actually got button three, which is this middle button on my mouse set up to go to the app switcher because that's something I use all the time to switch between apps and I think that'll be super handy. So that will do that for me and then I can click to go back to there and then button three is the app switcher so that so not the app switcher is the uh, menu there so open the menu the accessibility menu and that way I can jump in here use any sort of other custom things if I need to pinch if I want to use double tap and 3d touch and you can set all of that up in the accessibility features to do more and more things so that's all pretty cool that's the basic settings for the different buttons that we have here let's jump into some other settings as well so we're going to click yes I know it's still weird to say click back on devices go back to assistive touch now there's some other things that we have have here we've got our pointer style that we can click on here by the way mouse keys this is a weird one I haven't played with it yet but you can basically use keyboard keys as mouse 
cursors and maybe that's something we'll play around with another day because we do also have our Bluetooth keyboard set up here to use the keyboard shortcuts in GarageBand. So, but let's for now go to our pointer style because this is where we can adjust the size. So we can put the size all the way up to hello <laughs> if you wanted to be able to see really what you're doing there. I like the small sort of pointer like that, the more precise control for the sort of things I do. The colors here, you can have it the boring gray. You can have it white, then you can have it blue, or you can have it red, which we know we're going to go with because it goes so much faster. You can also auto hide. So after 15 seconds, and I won't do it. In fact, let's put the auto hide all the way down to like two seconds, shall we? And just show you how this works. So if we go back to pointer style now, if we take our hand off the mouse, after two seconds, it goes away. So if you don't want it hanging around on the screen there too much, you can actually reduce that down from the default 15 seconds, or you can turn auto hide off entirely if you wanna have that on your screen all the time. So that is some of the basic options that we have here. There's one more thing, which is the speed of the mouse, which is obviously gonna be pretty important to make sure that you can control your mouse cursor. So we'll scroll down, which still feels like scrolling up. And here is our tracking speed. So we can do it anywhere from really slow, which we're not gonna be able to get around the screen very well. Uh, oh. Oh God, it's gonna be hard to put it back up now. Uh, or we can have it medium, which is gonna work for most people. Or if you're one of those crazy twitchy gamer types, you can have it really, really fast where a tiny little movement goes flying around. So I'm an old man. So I'm gonna have it somewhere in the middle there. So that is all good. Now there are other options here and maybe we'll explore those in a future video. There's a bunch of different things that we can set up here in accessibility, but that is the basics that we can set up here for our mouse, for the basic buttons we have here. Play around with it. If you find some other cool features, definitely let me know, drop them down in the comments. But for now, let's jump in and see how if this can actually be a practical thing to use here on our iPhone. So with our handy app switcher button set for this middle button, we will click switch and we will click over to GarageBand. So you saw me at the start there use the keyboard here. Now that's not exactly gonna be the most useful thing. I don't know that I'm gonna be uh, clicking in any uh, melodies anytime soon, but our navigation is pretty cool here. So if we click here on the track view, we can come back here into our track view. We can scroll up and down. Uh, we've only got a small project here, but we can do that. Now click and drag is gonna work nicely. We can click and drag between different, uh, different sections there. And if we need to edit, we get some pretty nice precise controls. So say we wanted to bring this loop back. Yeah, that's gonna be pretty easy to do. Like my big chunky fingers sometimes, you don't get that precise control. I'm so much more used to a mouse that I can actually do that and it's gonna work a lot better for me. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, you can click on all the different things, your sliders, you're gonna be able to slide up and down here, click and touch and drag, double tap. So yep, double click is going to put things back to zero. So that's all back to their default. So that's pretty cool as well. And yeah, it's just, it's a nice experience. I know you're thinking, Pete, it's a iPhone screen. And yes, this is the 6S Plus. So there's a little bit more screen real estate. If you're on a smaller device, then it might not be quite as useful. And obviously what we're all waiting for is the iPad because it's gonna be so much cooler to be able to do this. But even just sort of clicking around here in this small project here, I'm already seeing that this is gonna work pretty well. And if we wanted to go in and say edit, double tap, we can bring up that menu there and we go to our edit. Uh, here we go. So we can actually come in here and we can move these around. We can click on them. Uh, in fact, let's go to our piano because then we'll actually be able to hear it a bit better. That's a drum. So again, double, double click, click edit. And then, yep, we can tap on that. We can move it. We can uh, extend it if we click at the end part there. So we can change the size there and we can zoom in. So this is where you're gonna need to work out what you wanna set your different things as. So if we click down here on this uh, menu and you go to your custom options, you've got a pinch option here. And then if we click and drag, we can pinch up and down. So if you wanna zoom in, you can actually do that. So you can get your pinch control there. So if you were doing some precise editing, whoop, just click off of that then you can do that in here by zooming into your piano roll and doing your editing. So let's click done on that one. So GarageBand, yeah, I can see some pretty cool uh, options here um, that's gonna work pretty well. So why don't we now jump over to another app. So another thing that I do a lot of is video editing. So if we, again, click the middle button here, which I've set up as my app switcher, click over here into Luma Fusion. Uh, yeah, same sort of thing here. We've got all of our transport controls that we can click around to. All of our options down the bottom here are gonna be nice and easy to copy our attributes, to paste things in, and then to be able to have this precise control 
over our timeline here. And you know, if you've ever tried to make these little tiny adjustments in a video editing, whether you're using iMovie or LumaFusion, that can be one of the toughest things to do because I don't know about you, but you move it with your finger and then you pull your finger away and it goes, boom, and it just suddenly changes to another position. Whereas with a mouse, you get that precise control. And as soon as you release it, because you're not moving, you can have a stable hand it sticks in exactly the right spot. So I can see this being pretty useful for that as well. So what is my verdict? Well, so far, yeah, it's a bit of fun. Like you can scroll around, you can drag around your different apps, you can do some cool things in here. Is it gonna be the game changer? As I'm running out of battery, is it gonna be a game changer? Well, I think once we try this out on the iPad, so this is coming to iPad OS in about five days time, but yeah, it's worthwhile if you do have a USB mouse and you've got one of the Lightning to USB adapters, plug it in and play around with it and get used to it because I think once we get to the iPad, it's gonna be even more useful, but it's a very cool thing anyway. It's something worth trying and I'm glad that we finally have it. If you wanna check out more videos about iOS, iOS 13 and GarageBand and all the other fun stuff here. There's two linked down below, including my recent video about how to use a USB flash drive with iOS 13. Got any other comments or questions? Leave those down below as well. Subscribe by clicking or tapping on the Studio Live Today icon in the top right corner, and I'll see you on the next video.